Vamos, brothers and boys, it's Tim. Welcome back to another episode of South Stand Signings. The series, of course, where we go through everything happening in the world of world. Leeds United. And we have a little talk about it. And there is a hell of a lot of transfer action. Leeds have been popping off more than a firing range in the hood. And boy, there is so much for us to get our Nash's dug into today, this morning. So let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into the meat of the action. And the first position that Leeds fans have been absolutely craving for this entire summer. No, it's not a striker, but it is a defensive reinforcement. And especially with the news that senior Furpo is going to be out for eight weeks. Leeds fans have been clawing for a new left back. And it looks like Leeds are ready to deliver on that that front. Leeds United are weighing up a bid for Josh Tymon. That is right. Leeds United are weighing up a move for Stoke City left back Josh Tymon. According to the Daily Mail, the Whites have been extremely busy this summer with six new signings made at a cost of £95 million and it does look like we are finally going to splash some of that cash on a new left back. With Furpo out for eight weeks, they really, really need one and a move for 23-year-old Tymon who was a regular at Stoke last season could be a shrewd piece of business in the short term. Now look, there's been a lot of talk about Alioski, there's been a lot of talk about Charlie Taylor, there's been a lot of talk about quite a few left-back names. One of them that hasn't really been spoken about that much is Josh Tymon. We did speak about it here on this channel about three, four days ago, but it did seem like it was a bit of a long shot, especially with Senior Furpo coming into his own against Blackpool, really. However, since then, he has had that unfortunate injury that has kept him out of action for eight weeks, so it does look imperative that we do sign a left pack. I know we are likely to play Jack Harrison there. We did see early on in our first preseason game of the US, of the Australian tour, should I say. Jack Harrison did start off in the left back position and it was very interesting the way things worked. He kind of was playing as a bit of a wing back and then you'd have Mark Roker going into centre half. You'd have Stroik going out into left back. It was a funny old system. I like it. Don't get me wrong, but I think we probably still do need a backup left back in there. I do like the width that we did get with Harrison and Rasmus in the fullback positions. We tried it with Leif Davis in the second half. Didn't really work out so well, but it does just give us that extra bit of breathing room, that extra bit of comfort if we do sign another fullback. I 100% get that. I think for me, you're looking at a situation where if you can get him on the cheap, if you can get him for around five to six million pounds, I don't think that it's a, it's a big problem at all. If you're saying maybe he's costing in the region of 10 to 15 million pounds, which I don't think Josh Tymon would command a transfer fee that high, then you're looking at a situation where he's potentially hindering our ability to go all guns blazing for a top striker or maybe even another midfielder. There's still talk about us getting Cody Gakpo as another wing replacement. So it's an interesting one. I think if we can get him on the cheap, I think I speak for everyone here saying that it is a good piece of business, a shrewd piece of business. But what do you guys think about Josh Tymon, eh? Does he give you the rhythm? Does he give you the rhyme? Does he make you want to get up like it's Bob Slay time? Does he make you feel higher than a guy in Piccadilly Circus? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Now, another move that will not be getting the public happy and another move which I think you guys will not be very happy Happy with and another move that makes it even more imperative that we might need to go in for Josh Tymon is that Newcastle are apparently reconsidering a bid for Jack Harrison. This has been a saga that has gone on from the first day that the transfer window opened pretty much ever since that ball hit the back of the net from his beautiful strike against Brentford. He has been linked with a move away from Ellen Road. Everton registering a slight bit of interest. However, Newcastle really gunning for him this this summer and it does seem like they're readying a bit of around 20 million pounds although Leeds are set to hold out for 30 million pounds. Jesse Marsh spoke about this and he spoke with Harrison apparently and Harrison had had apparently come out and said, look, I'm happy at Leeds. I want to stay at Leeds. I have no desire to leave Leeds United at all. And I think for me, that's all I need to hear. I don't think Jack Harrison is going to go. I think it would be a massive, massive, massive mistake to let him go. What do you guys think about that one? Do you think there's even a snowball's chance in hell? We, we do let him go. And if we do... Who do we replace him with? We need to replace him with a left back and another winger. And then we still need to get another striker. Not a good piece of business, in my opinion, if we do sell him. Not a piece of business I expect to see happen, to be honest. But 
hey, stranger things have happened. And speaking of a transfer that would be very, very strange, Leeds United are very interested in Joachim Correa. That is right. According to Italian publication Gazzetta della Sport via Siempre Inter, they claim that following Rafinha's £55 million move to Barcelona, Victor Orta is now targeting a move for the Inter Milan forward as a replacement for the 25-year-old Brazilian. The report goes on to state that West Ham, Sevilla and Marseille are also interested while the Serie A club are believed to be willing to part with the Argentine international for just £19 million. A bit of a snip, a bit of a snip in the market indeed. He's someone who again can play anywhere along that front line. He is most deployed as a second striker, which if you were listening to my Dries Mertens video the other day, that is what I was saying is exactly what we need. We do not need another first striker because we've already got Bamford and Gelhard who can play that role. From all the, the the footage and all the gameplay I've seen from Gelhard over the past eight months and especially during preseason he plays a lot better in that main striker role for me on the back line of the defenders pinning them back trying to spin in behind doing the pressing from the front I don't think he quite has that link up play or that intricacy to his game just yet to play as the second striker I think it's better to have someone around him that is better at that whether it be a Rodrigo whether it be a Joaquin Correa whether it be a Dries Mertens whoever the hell it is going to be I think he is better in the Patrick Bamford role which is why I don't see too much of a future of Gelhard and Bamford playing too many games together I think they're vying for the same role and I think we're going to sign someone to co compete with uh, Rodrigo for that second striker role that's what I think personally is going to happen and Joaquin Correa could just be that man. Now, let's have a little deep dive into some of his old status stackaroonies, shall we? In 26 Serie A appearances last season, he scored six goals, getting one assist in 1,023 minutes, which is just about a goal, just over 146 minutes. Not the best, not the worst. He does give a lot of experience. He's played at the top level, five games in the Champions League last year, although it is important to note, only registering 106 minutes in that time. Again, only 143 minutes in the Italian Cup and 45 minutes in the Supercoppa Italia. Hasn't really featured too much for a side that finished second, very close in a title race. It hasn't been the best year for him at Inter Milan by all accounts which is why they do want to get rid that is another important thing to note how many clubs are interested in him not too too many top top clubs is another interesting shout however like I said, the experience and the quality that he does bring in an abundance could help us out. There are other names that I would personally be a little bit more interested in. However, if you're bringing him alongside a Calamowendo, a Catalere or other players, then maybe I could go for it. But for me, I think he's probably about three or four down in the list of priorities right now. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. But speaking of a big Big priority for Leeds United. This is exactly what I want to see right here. This is the most magical article I've seen all day. Leeds United want to sign Arsenal attacker Nicola Pepe. You're damn right we do. Pepe the Froge. Pepe the Don. Pepe the dribbling, McJiggling gangster. Whatever you want to call him. He is the perfect man for Leeds United. Let me tell you something. He is saucy. He is slick. He is quick. And boy, look at those thighs. He is thick. The Frenchman changes a agent in May 2022 with a view to getting him a move away from the Emirates Stadium. Marseille, Lyon and Seville are also linked with the Frenchman. Why the number says Frenchman? When he does actually play for the Ivorian national team, however, technically he was born in France, so he is a native Frenchman. Signing a wide man was crucial with Rafinha leaving for Barcelona. We did that when we brought in Luis Sinistera. Could we get another one? Is it important that we get another one, especially for playing Harrison a wing back with Dan James firing on all cylinders early on in preseason? Do we need another winger? Look, I don't think this one makes much sense. It's not really a position we need. I'm probably in the minority that I really rate his quality and I really rate his talent. His work ethic, his work rate and his ability to keep fit, however, have serious question marks around them. And when we do need a striker and a left back for me, this is a bit of a non-starter, this story. Unfortunate, but it's a non-starter. And speaking of another non-starter, Leeds United are apparently real danger for AC Milan in Charles de Catalere Hunt. The auction could begin with AC Milan apparently messing around with Club Bruges, not willing to 
pay that final bit of money and it's saying that they're only 4.2 million pounds away from their asking price so why they're not putting the money up there they're trying to pay it in too many installments Leeds are apparently willing to pay it all up front could Leeds slip in there absolutely no chance and do I even want him at this point no look he's made it very clear he doesn't want to go to us he wants to go to AC Milan I don't really see this move happening I'm getting a bit tired of talking about Charles de Catalere for to be honest I was going to say for some reason, but there's a very clear reason. And to be honest, I am getting a little bit sick of it. However, one man I am not getting sick of talking about at all is this man, Arnaud Gallimuendo. And Leeds United are apparently on the verge of agreeing a deal to sign Paris Saint-Germain striker Arnaud Gallimuendo. And we are very, very, very confident of signing him. That is right. The online source have reported that Leeds will pay £21 million and are now confident of securing the new blockbuster transfer to solve their striking crisis. It is shared that Andrea Radrizzani will smash past £100 million total spend in the window with this deal as he looks to back Jesse Marsh before his first full season in charge. This is exactly what I like to see. Newcastle and Sassuolo have been in the mix for the young wonder kid. However, talks continuing between Leeds and Paris Saint-Germain and it looks like Leeds are set to come with an agreement now in sight. Leeds have apparently moved very, very quickly in getting this deal over the line and it looks like we are going to be paying that fee of 21 million pounds there isn't enough information about whether that release clause whether that buyback fee is on there although according to a lot of you guys some of you guys aren't even too mad at there being a buyback fee on there i'm a, I'm a bit in the mini minority of not being too happy about a buyback fee hey the way they're talking about it here there might not even be one if we if we appease them enough if we're willing to pay it up front enough then maybe there even there isn't even going to be a buyback clause in there but I think it's a great piece of quality we could add to the side we've struggled to get goals recently in pre-season you know we had a nice flash in the pan in the first half an hour Bamford not really clicking when he did come on there's still questions around his fitness I think it is imperative that we do sign another striker to play alongside uh, uh, to play alongside Joe Gelhard Rodrigo had his critics again sometimes being a little bit too clunky on the ball trying to do a bit too much much not playing the simple pass, kind of giving the ball away. Callum Awendo next to Joe Gelhard could be a beautiful, beautiful partnership uh, and one that really helps Leeds boom through the initial parts of the season and get some points under the belt nice and early on before Patrick Bamford maybe regains some fitness and some form of yesteryear. But I think this deal is very close to being done. The way they're talking and from other rumours and rumblings in the jungle that I am hearing... Could be done within this next week or the next week after. So it's in the next four, five, six, seven days. We could be done with this one. I think this is a very good deal if you ask me. I know I was talking about Dries Mertens, but before that and even after that, he is definitely my next best target from Dries Mertens. And there are a lot of factors that make me want him even more than Dries Mertens, especially his age, his scope for development. And I'm very, very happy with Callum Oendo. I'm much more happy with Callum Oendo than I am with someone like Charles de Catalere. Even if they, even if we had the option to buy them both for the same price right now, I think I'd actually prefer Callum Oendo personally. I, I think his scope for development is amazing. He can play anywhere along that front line. He can feature out wide in that attacking midfield role. He can feature in in the forward line, he can feature as a second striker. He is perfect for me, and I do see this move happening very, very soon. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. But for now, guys, I will see you very, very soon. Au revoir, my brothers and my sisters.